If you're building a 3D printer from scratch, one of the first things you're going to have to do is assemble your frame. Now, starting off with a squared up frame is one of the most critical and important steps when it comes to building your own 3D printer. Ensuring that you start off with a frame that is squared and true will ensure that you have success further on in the build and will make troubleshooting any issues that arise with your 3D printer much simpler. In today's video, I'm going to be assembling this Voron V2.4 frame, and I'll be going over some tips and tricks along with some tools you may want to have on hand to ensure that you're building your frame correctly. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to cover is the extrusions themselves. Uh, you can get extrusions from various different sources. If you are purchasing a kit, most of the time they come with the extrusions. This is an LDO kit that I'm using for the printer, so we have LDO extrusions. Now, whether you self-source your build or purchase a kit, when the extrusions arrive, there are two things you're going to have to keep an eye out for. One is the length of the extrusion, and two is that the extrusions are cut square. So I just pulled out a few extrusions here just to demonstrate. So when it comes to the lengths of the extrusions, uh, the actual length comparing to the CAD data, while important, is not actually the most critical thing when it comes to checking your length. What you need to ensure is that all extrusions that share the same length are equal. So for example, on a Voron V2, the four extrusions that make up the vertical Z axis of the printer on the sides. Now for your build, if those were say supposed to be 500 millimeters tall and you measured them and they were 501 millimeters, as long as all four of those extrusions are 501 millimeters, you're okay. You'll still be able to build a squared frame and there is adjustment in the design. So that's not going to be an issue. However, if you measure like length extrusions and you find there is some uh, variance to their lengths, then you're going to run into issues because you're not going to be able to assemble the frame square. Now, if you do find though, that if extrusions that are supposed to share a similar length, are dissimilar, uh, that's when you're gonna run into issues because you're not gonna be able to build a square frame with unequal length extrusions. Now, if this happens to you, uh, you do have some options. You can either contact the manufacturer of the extrusion or the kit maker, see if you can get some corrected extrusions sent over, or if you have access to machining, such as a bridge port, uh, you can go ahead and correct the extrusions themselves. But when it comes to cutting your own extrusions, uh, another thing you need to keep an eye on is ensuring that your extrusions are square at the end. Most Vorons now are built with blind joints. So what that means is for attaching your extrusions together, you're gonna to be attaching extrusion directly to extrusion. So if the ends are not cut square, when you screw everything together, you'll find that they'll be coming off on angles. You can sort of get away with a little bit of angle to the cuts however you want to ensure that they are as square as possible now luckily in my experience most kit manufacturers and if you purchase extrusions that are pre-cut by a company most of the time they come in cut square and anytime there is an issue you can usually get replacements sent over without much hassle but if you are cutting extrusions in your cells, you are going to want to ensure that you're cutting these extrusions as square as possible you're going to have less headaches down the line now, outside of the extrusions, uh, what else do you want? Well, you're going to need some screws to put it together, but you're going to want some tools to ensure that you're putting this frame together as square as possible and as easily as possible. And the first one is a flat surface. So on my desk here, this is actually a quartz offcut that I got from a countertop manufacturer. Now, obviously, this is not a Starrett layout table. This is not, you know, precision, but it is flat enough for what we're doing. Now, if you don't have something like this at home or you don't have the ability to go get something, you're gonna to wanna to build your printer on the flattest object that you can within reason. Uh, for example, most countertops are relatively flat. If you have a glass top stove, those are actually pretty flat. I built my original V2 frame on one of those upstairs and it's been four years and things are still good with that frame. So you are gonna to wanna to ensure that you're building it on the flattest surface you can. So your build surface is definitely gonna vary depending on what you have available, but this is not something you're gonna to wanna to build on a carpet, for example. So besides a flat surface to build on, uh, you're gonna want some tools to make your life easy. Uh, the first one here is a Verner caliper. You're gonna want this a lot if you are involved in 3D printing. You don't need to go out and buy a Minotoyo or stare at one for the type of work you'll be working on with a 3D printer. I do like digital ones because you do have the ability to zero it at different points, which make 
comparison measuring easier versus a analog one. And these can be very useful for ensuring that you have a accurate gap between extrusions on frames like the Trident. And also, uh, for those that don't know, uh, this part here that extends out of the bottom when you measure a distance, you can lock it down at certain lengths. So you can use it as sort of a depth mic uh, to ensure that your offsets are correct for assembling something like a V0 frame. I do find having uh, scales or a ruler uh, around handy as well for measurements. A hard scale is very useful. Um, the less flex in the scale, the more accurate it will be, obviously, because when it flexes, the distance change. So I do have this uh, 30 centimeter hard scale that I use. I also have a, and it's living Canada, so we do have inches, a 24 inch scale. Now this is flexible, but having a 24 inch scale uh, does come in handy at times. And for squaring up your frames, especially the larger frames, uh, you're going to want a tape measure. And we'll get into that after we have our frame assembled but you are gonna to wanna to have a tape measure on hand. And lastly, a machinist square. Now, this isn't really 100% required, uh, but these are basically accurate squares. Now, you probably have a carpenter square somewhere in your house, um, but machinist squares are to a higher degree of accuracy when it comes to measuring a right angle. Now, this can be very useful uh, for ensuring the ends of your extrusion, for example, are cut square, and also for ensuring inside corners are square. So as I build the frame up, I'll be showing how to use all these different tools to ensure that your frame is square. So let's get started building the frame. Now, when it comes to assembling your frame, the first thing you wanna do is take all your extrusions out, uh, take all the wrappers off of them, ensure they're all clean, and align them and group them up by size. So go ahead, pair up all your extrusions of similar length and get them all out on the table, and then you're gonna check the manual. And the manual is gonna tell you what extrusions you're gonna need for what step. So as you can see here, the first thing we're gonna assemble is the square frame of the printer. And you can see right here that it's calling out for these four long extrusions that have the holes in both ends. And then we're also gonna need these eight extrusions of equal length. So we're gonna go ahead, get those put aside, and then the rest of the extrusions we're gonna put in the box. Now, I'm gonna be assembling this frame using blind joints. And I do have a separate video all about blind joints and I'll link it here if you wanna take a look at that. Now, if you are assembling your frame using something like Masumi corner cubes, open build corner cubes, or if it's a printer that uses brackets for attaching your extrusions together, obviously there's gonna be different steps involved when it comes to actually attaching things together for the frame, but the steps for squaring up the frame should be similar so you can follow along if you're building a rat rig, for example. So again, follow the manual, follow the steps when it comes to building your frame, ensure that you're building it correctly using the right size extrusions where it calls out. And again, this is gonna be using blind joints. So I'll be attaching things with M516 screws here. And it looks like our first step here is gonna be using one vertical piece and then two side pieces here. So let's go ahead and get that assembled. Now this is where our flat build surface comes into play. Uh, we've gone through this kit. I know all the corners are cut square and flush. So when it comes to ensuring that we're building things up square, you're gonna wanna essentially ensure that all surfaces are flat to your build plate when you tighten everything together. Now, if for example, you do not have something flat in your house to build your printer on, uh, your, your house was built in the 1800s and everything is completely out of whack. In a pinch, if you really need to, you can use your build plate. Um, Mike 6 aluminum cast tooling plates, those are very flat. And while they obviously aren't gonna be big enough to build an entire printer on, you can use it as sort of a reference for the smaller sub-assemblies like ensuring corners are assembled squared up. Now we do have our two sides attached here. And before we go and tighten things up final, we're going to ensure that everything is square. So for the bottom, we're using the build table, which is known flat. And then we're gonna use our machinist square here against the side, and we're gonna ensure the extrusion on this side is lined up with the face of our vertical extrusion. And you're just gonna to have to hold everything together. This is one of those points where if we had three hands, it would be a lot easier, but you can make by with two. And we do the other side as well. And there we have it. Now, if you wanna check that your inside corner is square, that's where the uh, machinist square comes into play. 
that there. You may have to tilt it up so you have some light uh, behind it so you can see if there is any gap and we are good. You can also check your verticals as well. And we're good. Now at this point, you would go ahead to the next step and you're just going to carry on. Each corner is pretty much going to be the same thing. Uh, eventually you're going to get to the point where corners are joined together. Um, but you're going to go through and you're going to assemble each corner, squaring it up as you go along until you have a fully assembled cube. So I'm going to turn on the fast forward and let's get this frame built up. And I think we are good. So we now have our frame assembled. Um, we've assembled it to our, the best of our abilities. We've used a flat surface. Uh, we've used a machina square. By the way, if you don't have a machina square in a pinch when you're squaring up your sides, when you want to make sure they're squared up when you tighten them, you can use just a spare piece of extrusion to just butt up against it. That works good in a pinch. But we built it to the best of our abilities. Are, are we ready to start hanging parts on it? No, there's one more thing we have to check. And to do that, you're going to need your tape measure. Now, if it is a small printer like AV0, you can get by with a ruler. Uh, but most of these larger builds here, you're probably going to use a tape measure. And we are going to measure corner to corner on every side that shares a dimension with another side. And we're going to compare. So what that means is for this V2 here, it's a 300 by 300. I'm going to measure corner to corner on all four of these vertical sides. And I'm going to measure corner to corner on the top and the bottom. And that measurement should be the same corner to corner on all equal sized sides. And that will ensure that our frame is indeed square. So we have built it to the best of our abilities. And now we're going to ensure that we built it square. So this is quite simple. You take your tape measure and you're going to measure corner to corner. Now, it doesn't matter if it's inside corner or outside corner, as long as your extrusions are cut squared. And when you measure it, just make sure you use the same method of measuring on each side. So for example, what I do is for the side of the tape measure that has the tab on it, I put that centered on the corner. And then on the opposite side, I measure off the top of the tape measure. As long as you use the same method for every corner, uh, you'll have the same results. So this is an inch tape measure because I can't find my metric one. I've got 26 and an eighth. And on this side, I have 26 and an eighth. Yes, inches are weird. Give me metric. But now we know that this side is square. So now we're going to go. And we're going to measure the other side. 26 and an eighth. 26 and an eighth. And we're going to measure the other two sides. And hopefully those will be the same. And then we're going to measure the top and the bottom and make sure the top and the bottom are the same. Now, hopefully all your dimensions are good and your frame is indeed true and square. Um, most good quality kits, most good quality manufacturers of extrusions, when they cut everything, they cut everything in batches. So your lengths should all be accurate. They're usually cut with a machine, so they should be cut square. So really, as long as you have a good base to start building your printer on, you should have a relatively square frame out of the box once you put it together. Now, if things are out, you're going to have to start tweaking things. And it depends on how much it is out. Depending on your printer and what corner itself is out, if we're talking half a millimeter over a 350 millimeter size frame, that might be the best that you can get out of that. On a V2, for example, because your linear rails for your Z axis ride on all four of your vertical extrusions, you're going to want to make sure that they are square. If, for example, the gap up here is more than the gap down here, as your Z axis moves up and down, it can bind. Uh, you don't want that. Um, so you're going to want to ensure that you get it as square as possible. Now, if for whatever reason you can't get something squared up. Um, the extrusion is too long and you have no way of uh, making it smaller. You may have to swap some extrusions around. Uh, you might have to get out a file or some shim in a worst case scenario. Um, but for example, on a V0 here, okay? So say for example that you can get everything squared up, but no matter what, you can't get this one corner squared up, okay? 
This corner right here, there's really no motion tied to it per se. So if for whatever reason, you just can't get that one corner squared up, it's not that big of a deal. Now, when it comes to something like your Z axis to your gantry, you want that to be perpendicular. If your Z axis is not moving straight up and down and your gantry is not moving um, flat horizontally, and they're not, you know, perfectly square to each other, when you print something, everything's gonna come out like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So you want to take the time, pour coffee if you need to, and make sure your frame is square and make sure you're starting your printer build off with a solid face. Now, this is just the outside frame of a printer. On a V2, uh, this is pretty much the critical part of squaring up your printer. Now on other printers, like a V0 or a Trident, you're gonna have extrusions within this that are also critical to motion. That's where the set of vernier calipers will come in handy. So on a Trident, for example, your gantry rides on an extrusion that mounts roughly about here. So when it comes to building your trident frame, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the outside of it is squared after you build everything up. And then when it comes to ensuring that your gantry extrusion that's within the frame is installed properly, you're gonna compare the gap on the front and the back. And that's where having an accurate set of vernier calipers come into play. Now, going back to a V0, for example, uh, there are locations where extrusions are inset from the exterior of the printers. So you're not building a complete square. There's extrusions missing in spots and there's extrusions inset. So when it comes to insetting them to ensure that you're insetting them the correct amount, again, you can use your Werner caliper, set it to whatever distance that they need to be inset by. And when you're assembling your frame, you can use that set distance there as sort of a standoff to ensure that you are setting all extrusions to the correct location. So I hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial video on how to assemble your printer frame and ensure that it's squared to the best of your abilities. As always, if you do have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. If you wanna see more content such as this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. And on your way out, make sure you like that smash button. If you wanna help support the content I create and the things I do, but not be able to do this without you, I have links in the description as well. Thank you and have a great day.